loop uh, that goes around, which is a measured uh, walking track. Uh, we have playgrounds for different age appropriate. We have a pavilion uh, performance area, uh, splash pad, basketball court. Uh, we have a main entry uh, plaza that uh, will reincorporate the existing uh, game tables that are currently out there now, as well as that more. Uh, and then the number one thing, which uh, seemed to come up over and over again, was this right here, is the need for uh, restroom facilities. And, uh, and I'll, I'll touch a little bit more on that as we go. Um, so looking, uh, starting at the playground areas, um, we uh, were doing a uh, sort of integrated design uh, with 5 to 12 and 2 to 5 uh, and seating in between and around uh, so that there's multiple vantage points for uh, you know, watching the kids. Uh, also integrated in the central seating area, which is right here, uh, will be a music, uh, outdoor music uh, collaboration area where there'll be different instruments that are designed specifically for the outdoors and there is no age-appropriate level for those. So that's why we decided to put them in the middle uh, so that any kid at any point, uh, including parents, can go ahead and use them. Um, so these are, uh, these are 3D renderings of what some of the proposed equipment is. Uh, we, we were given some direction uh, by not only the public but also by uh, redevelopment as to some of the elements that they were looking for uh, and some of the things that they thought. We really wanted to bring something in here that you just don't see in, in, in another park. Uh, around here, and we wanted to really bring something dynamic in there and challenging, and ropes and slides and climbing walls and, and things where multiple kids could be on the elements uh, at once rather than just saying, okay, wait, Johnny, it's not your turn yet, you know, you gotta go. So all these elements are really designed, uh, including this one right here, uh, for multiple kids to be on at the same time. Uh, these are some enlargements on the bottom. Uh, these are some samples of that type of equipment. This is actually uh, the same, the similar type piece that we will be putting in. Uh, and these are some other uh, types of uh, components uh, that we're still exploring. Uh, these are the music uh, elements, uh, different size drums, uh, pagoda bells, and uh, the manta ray um, xylophone, which, uh, which is quite popular. We've used it a, a couple of other times, and we've seen uh, from the youngest kids to the oldest adults using it. So. We're hoping it, uh, it does the same here. Um, moving uh, sort of south and east uh, was the desire for a splash pad. And uh, we were looking uh, at a different uh, array of options uh, so that it's not just a, a sort of an open uh, flat area during the winter. Uh, we were trying to also provide different elements for different age groups. So you don't want a, a pretty high forceful jet for, uh, for a young toddler. You, something smaller, more bubbly, but then things they could run through at any age. And uh, you can see here, here are some 3D renderings uh, that, the, uh, that the manufacturer gave us, where you can see that there's different jets, bubblers, uh, smaller fountains, including a, a whale tail uh, here with the, the humpback and then the uh, blowhole pushing water out. So it's uh, kind of a, a, a whimsical type of theme, but with a variety of other stuff going on in and around it. Um, this is all potable water, direct uh, discharge. Uh, there's no recycling uh, of the water in this case. Uh, and it's all activated uh, by the user and it runs through a typical cycle that it automatically shuts off. And everything here is designed to be uh, either removed or uh, uh, seasoned over the winter. Easier, easier maintenance. Uh, moving up to the northwest corner, um, the basketball hoop uh, was uh, sort of stretched and widened to make it uh, a regulation size. Uh, we did maintain a small amount of fencing here and here to reduce the amount of uh, you know, errant balls flying either uh, into the parking lot or into the road, uh, but we did open up this corridor uh, by recommendation of uh, Travis Sims, who's the uh, director, or uh, he's the chairman of the Parks and Rec Committee. And uh, what he was really looking for is that direct connection from the basketball uh, to the street. And so what we did is we uh, came up with a plaza where we will be using very large granite blocks as informal seating so you could sit on any side. And then a couple of uh, you know, larger shade trees will go underneath so it creates that little resting area in between games. And we've also done the same thing on here. Uh, one, of, uh, one of the attendees at a previous uh, thing had mentioned that her son was playing in a tournament here. And while she was sitting there, she was able to get a lot of work done because she had Wi-Fi on her phone. So one of the things that we are looking at throughout the park is, uh, you know, 
where we can allow it or where we can have it and where it's accessible is electricity as well as Wi-Fi. Um, that may not be as evident on the plan, but it is something that is being incorporated uh, through the electrical system throughout. Uh, the other element down to here is a fitness station, which will have a variety of um, not your traditional just pull-up bars or push-up bars, but actually uh, rowers and other things like that that are specifically designed for all weather environments and they're designed to stay through the winter. They're fully encased, fully enclosed, minimal maintenance, uh, and they're, uh, they're growing in, in popularity. And uh, so we've, we've created a fitness station here right near the parking lot, but located along that uh, loop that travels around. Oh, I'm sorry. You said the top where you said the basketball. Oh, right here. On the other side. This? Bike racks. Oh, I'm sorry. These are bike racks. Oh, bike racks. Yeah. Yeah, we have them in a couple locations throughout the park for, uh, for easy of access. Are those the rental bikes or just? No, just bike racks. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just bike racks. Yep. So uh, these are some of the types of equipment. Uh, we're, we're still vetting out some of the equipment right now based on uh, budget and also based on uh, exercise value. Uh, same with the playground, we're looking for a lot of value not only for the kids but also for adults or anybody who wants to use exercise equipment. So here is the uh, one tenth mile walking loop, uh, so ten laps, one mile, um, and we also have a third of an acre free play in the middle and again the free play in the middle is designed for not just play, but it could also be used for events. It could be for gatherings. It could be for uh, weekend markets or fairs or, or other elements like that. Uh, any sort of plan, uh, you know, permitted, uh, organized type of event. Um, and what I'll get to down here is, uh, is this structure right here, which is our, um, sorry, let me go back, which is uh, the amphitheater. I'll touch on that in two slides. Um, this is the uh, main uh, entry gate, formalized gateway uh, on the corner of Raymond and Day. Uh, in this area we have uh, some existing benches, but we also have some existing and new game tables that are currently in the park that will be reused and relocated along with the benches that were there. Um, this area will also lend itself as an opportunity for uh, informational kiosk. Uh, if that's so chosen, uh, as well as potentially an opportunity for sculpture, uh, local art, which may uh, be located within this uh, area right here. Uh, that has yet to be formalized, but we are making, uh, we, we are considering the size and the layout of it so that that could be retrofitted if need be. And then on to the pavilion. Uh, so uh, we, we were looking at a more traditional either rectangle or an octagon type of structure. Uh, but when we were initially designing the overall lawn, uh, it has a very, very gradual pitch um, from north down to the south. But what that does is it lends for an opportunity so that people sitting at the far end up here can look over potentially the people that are sitting 15, 20 feet in front of them. And therefore, it creates almost an amphitheater type of feel where there could be events, performances, music, uh, birthday parties. Um, it could be a permittable space for the city. Uh, it could be, uh, it could serve just about anything. And included in here will be uh, lighting as well as electrical uh, access so that if a band were to plug in or a DJ or anything like that, uh, that would be all readily available for them. So and then these are just some of the furnishings uh, that we've used. These are very similar. The game tables are almost identical. Uh, the benches are similar, uh, but we'll follow the, uh, the existing ones that are there that we're going to reuse uh, to keep costs down. Um, and then these are just some renderings uh, that we did. Uh, note that the, this was done before the fence was removed, but uh, the fence will be removed from here all the way down to here, um, and the fence will just simply go around the outside to keep the balls from moving, and there will be no fence on this side. And then this is uh, just another view of the, uh, the seat walls at the main uh, Raymond and Day, and then uh, a couple benches, and then the game tables, but with plenty of space so that if you do have a large volume of people coming in, they're not bumping into the tables or crowding. Um, so some other things about uh, connectivity and accessibility. Uh, the park pavement areas uh, are 100% ADA compliant. Uh, they're hard surface, so every, uh, every ac activity in the park can be accessed uh, via wheelchair. Um, plenty of parking uh, within the lot. I believe we were able to squeeze out one more space. Uh, we're able to tuck the utility uh, uh, components in here. And then obviously we have the uh, two South Main Street uh, access right there and then the access off Raymond into the parking lot. So going back to the Porta Johns, uh, this was a number of thing, uh, a number of times it came up about why can't we have bathrooms here? What do we do for, for uh, park patrons? 
and rather than trying to go into the community center and worrying about who's going in, who's going out, or in fact building a very expensive bathroom on site, which needs to be regularly maintained and it needs to be locked and open, um, we, we're looking at, uh, at creating a, uh, an aesthetic structure uh, which the port johns can be slid into so that on all sides but one uh, will be a, uh, you know, whether it be a wood clad or some sort of aesthetic structure, but then at the same time, uh, it's a contract that's not maintained by the city. The city merely pays a, a, a vendor to come out, get them every so often, sets up a schedule, and, uh, you know, uh, mission accomplished when it comes to that. Not necessarily the most desirable in terms of a nice, clean bathroom uh, on a consistent basis, uh, but it was agreed after multiple discussions that this was, a, uh, this was a good compromise for everybody so that we can actually include it uh, within the master plan. Um, one other item that came up uh, almost initially, uh, and it over and over again, was about uh, lighting as well as views, access. Right now, there are a number of areas of the park that are not uh, visually accessible. Uh, they're also not necessarily pedestrian accessible in certain instances. So what we've done is uh, we've minimized our landscaping, uh, frankly, to uh, low mow, no mow, and just regular mow and go grass and high canopy trees. And the reason why is that we want to allow, essentially, from all directions, visual access in and through the park uh, to every element so that no element is sort of tucked in a corner and it's not going to invite the, the sort of uh, bad behavior that we, uh, we're trying to eliminate from, you know, from all the input. Um, and again, and you can see all the yellow dots represent uh, pedestrian uh, light levels. Now these lights are not going to be designed to be super bright or shine into the eye. They're meant to light up what's in front of you so that you can visually see 20, 30 feet in front of you and you know what's coming at you uh, as you're using the park, whether it be uh, you know early morning or late at night. And again, here are some of the fixtures and features. Uh, the fence, high, vis high visibility, limited barriers around the park. And, um, and again, we were discussing maintenance and operations very low to minimum, bow and go type of environment. And this was a directive that came from parks as well as the community because with uh, high demand plants uh, and, and lower ability to maintain them, uh, oftentimes they'll become a mess and nobody wants to see that. So this was sort of a, a compromise between various groups to make sure that we've got something in there that, that would be uh, uh, agreeable to everybody and easily maintainable, but still provide the shade and aesthetic any questions? Shoot. How long, 